I'm Julius Maddox. I hold four all-time world records for the bench press. Though those accolades are impressive, it hasn't always been like this. I haven't always been a champion. It's been a journey to get to the point to where I'm at today. Born and raised here in Owensboro, Kentucky, my mom worked to provide for me and my brother and my dad partied for a living. Some things that I remember as a kid was watching my mom get up at four o'clock in the morning and walk to work, come home, cook, clean, and handle the duties of both parents. Those are things that, that you know you see and it becomes your reality. So I'd never really seen myself Though I wanted to be successful, I never seen myself being successful due to being a product of my environment. As I went through high school, uh, played sports, got involved with people that I probably shouldn't have been running with. And that created uh, a lot more problems than uh, I ever thought that I would ever experience. From drug use to criminal behavior, violent activity, I just became a monster, you know? Started to gravitate away from things that I once loved, such as basketball, football, track and field, and things that, you know, gave me a sense of purpose. Some of the roughest seasons I went through was after I graduated high school. I'm in college all by myself, and basically I dove right in. A lot of that was due to things that I didn't get as a kid, such as attention and things like that. And when you start to get those things, especially when you're engaging in activities that you shouldn't be engaging in, you have a sense of being a part of something. And the lifestyle became an addiction in itself. Eventually, I just quit going to school all around and continued the lifestyle uh, of partying. And not only partying, but also I got into the distribution of drugs. In that season, over a time period of eight years, I found myself in and out of jail, using more drugs than I've ever used before. And the only thing that was on my mind was making money and partying. Deep down inside, really, I was crying out for help. I didn't wake up every morning wanting to be a drug addict or wanting to sell drugs. It's just that all of the bad choices that I've made kept pushing me deeper and deeper inside that lifestyle. Everything that I thought that would fill this void in my heart left me empty. 2012 was one of the most pivotal moments of my life. This time when I got busted, there was no getting out of jail. Uh, the charges were that serious to where I'm headed to prison this time. And I've always thought I would never be that guy to go to prison. There was some, even whenever I was doing the most, I never thought that I would ever get caught and go to prison. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's what 99% of people living that lifestyle think is that it will never happen to me. And it happened to me. Everything that I had worked for up to that point, all those ill-gotten gains, I traded it in for an orange jumpsuit at the county jail and was en route to go to prison. October 25th, 2012, I found myself in a visitation room facing my daughter and my wife. And on that day is a special day to me because it was my daughter's first birthday. On that day of my daughter's first birthday, I found myself sitting face to face with my little girl that I vowed and I made a commitment that I would never put her in the same situation as I was in growing up. And I did just that. And there, there was a moment when me and my daughter made eye to eye contact and again she's only one and she doesn't understand really what's going on she just tried to reach through the glass to touch me and she's touching the glass and i just remember that feeling of what it was like when she looked at me the thought ran across my mind like daddy why can't i touch you and that was literally the first time that was the first time in my life that i realized that it wasn't about me and that 
my actions go farther than just me. That everyone around me is going to suffer for the things that I've done or the things that I will do. And that's kind of when the process of me starting to change happened. I no longer cared about how much money I had. I no longer cared about how many girls I had or what kind of car I was driving or, you know, when's the next party? I didn't care anymore. All I wanted to do is earn a living for my family and be a dad to my kid and be a husband to my wife. So after being locked up for a while, I got the opportunity to either go to a long-term drug treatment facility or to serve the rest of my time. And of course, uh, I chose to go to this long-term recovery, even though I really didn't want to, it sounded good to change. But once you start living that out, it's a whole different process. Once you go through the grind and you go through the process of life, you know, of life change, uh, you know, you encounter many different struggles and problems. And a lot of times people turn back and go back to their old ways. I ended up going to a place called Friends of Sinners. Really, that's when things really started to change. I made a commitment to myself that for the next year, I'm gonna give it all I have. I learned how to be a man. I learned how to lead my family. I learned how to be a dad. And not only that, but that's where I started lifting weights. Here is where my weightlifting journey started. This is the dungeon. Let's go. You gotta be careful coming down here, Brennan. In the basement of one of the houses, there was a gym, a little home gym, which was, you know, bow flags, a little bench press, a whole bunch of just random weights on the floor. When I say this was a dungeon, it literally looks like a dungeon. It's not ideal for a person to go lift in a place like this, but that's where I found peace. I've been lifting for about four, four or five months, nothing serious, just to get a pump on, just so I can get my muscles pumped up, uh, help to clear my mind. You know, there's days I got to see my family and my wife and I wanted to look good. So, you know, I'd go down there and work out. Uh, and I did that for, you know, three to four months. And one day we got off work, we're down there meeting in the basement and we're getting ready to get our workout session on. And um, one of the guys said, I bet you can lift every single plate down here in this basement. I'm always up for a challenge. And I looked at him and I said, all right, throw the, throw the weight on. I got underneath the bar. We didn't even add the weight up. I know, right? How smart is that? Not very smart, especially when it comes to this amount of weight. But they loaded the weight on the bar, got underneath the bar. I pressed the weight three times. After I got up, we counted the weight and it ended up being 505 pounds. And one of the guys told me, he was like, do you realize that there's not a lot of people in the world that can lift that type of weight? And I'm still like dumbfounded. I, I have no idea what's going on, you know? I just know that, you know, I lifted the weight and now it's time to go get something to eat. The, my first competition I did, I had to get basically a furlough to leave the treatment facility that I was at, go compete. I won and then I had to go check back in. I didn't even have the money to even pay my entry to get into this meet. Someone paid it for me. So this is my first weightlifting trophy ever. Look, barbecue festival bench press competition, 2013. Won this trophy with a 525 pound bench press, which was my first unsanctioned competition. That's where the journey of my weightlifting began. The next year around the same event, I ended up adding on a hundred plus pounds to my bench press. And that's when things really got serious. A buddy of mine that's, that's, that had been training with me, that was actually one of the counselors there at one point, he reached out to Josh Bryant. And that's when I started being coached under Josh Bryant about eight months after that event. From there, history, literally we've made history. The, the irregular strength brand means to me, or just irregular strength means to me, overcoming adversity. That no matter what you've been through or where you've come from, you can always turn it around. Every person on the planet is allotted a certain gift and ability to have greatness inside of them. I feel that the irregular strength brand 
And my mission is to help not only myself, but others around me manifest that greatness that is inside of them. I just want to inspire the world. And basically to sum it up, to sum everything up about what I've been through, where I am today, and what I'm going to do in the future is I want to inspire the world from my community to my family to all areas around the world when it comes to strength sports and when it comes to addiction and recovery and people who have had the odds stacked against them and they changed their life. And that's what that's what we're about. That's what we're going to continue to preach. That's what we're going to continue to share. We're going to be irregular. We're different. We stand apart. So I just want to thank those who have been following the journey. And for the new people, I appreciate you guys following along also. Just get ready because we are ready to inspire the world. And we're going to do this together.